Rick. I hate when I do that. So the first practice, the practice review out uh, test assignment is we're given this function as to find domain and range. We have to understand two things. What is the domain and range? What does the, the function look like? The square root looks like this. We know we cannot have any negative numbers and the answer cannot be negative. So the smallest this number inside here can be is zero. So we factor it out and solve for our x-intercepts. Since the it's a quadratic equation and it's positive in front, the leading coefficient, so we know it opens up. We cannot use anything, we cannot use any x that gives us a negative solution because you cannot have a negative inside a radical. So our domain is from negative infinity to zero. I can use zero, so it's... And then from here, I can use seven going to infinity. So that's my domain. The range, I look at how it goes up. It starts at zero, and it goes to infinity. This is my range. So this is how I want you, when you come up here, you don't have to explain everything, but you're not lecturing. It'll be the responsibility of the of your fellow classmates in the classroom if they have any questions. When you solve something, ask questions, and we'll see how you can answer it. If you get stuck, I'll be right here, walk you through. Again, so we're going to go through the review, review assignment, assignment one online. This next one says, determine the graph of the function. Determine if the graph is a function of x. True or false? Ooh, we have a yes and a no. What is this question asking of us? Is it one-to-one? -one? A function has to be one-to-one. -one. For every x, there has to be one y value. Is that true in this case? No, it's called the vertical line test. This x has two y values, so no. It's not a function. Okay, so I'll pick somebody, and then they can come up here and start doing it on this. So when you're up here and you're writing, if you look at the screen here on the computer, that's what everybody sees on the big screen right here. So as you're writing, you, you can see what everybody else sees by what you see on the computer screen. So let's begin. Do I begin on the left side of the room or the right side of the room? I just have to, I just have to pick the first person. Everybody else gets to be the executioner. Let's see here. I will give the pen to somebody, then they come up here to do it. And have it, came and let me have it come up here yet. I have some formula sheets up here, some cheat sheets for y'all. <coughs> so on the worksheet? Three, number three. All right, over here? Number three. Oh, three. Yeah, use the scratch paper to look it out. Only put the answers on that sheet. Okay. So don't put it on the other because below those sheets is your scratch paper. Okay. Yeah, look at the computer screen. 
you know, as I just said, do not work it out on that sheet. Oh, okay. Work it on the scratch paper. Once you write down the question, then you can just put that with the question sheet up there. And everybody else in the audience should be doing it also. This is a review for you guys as well. Not just the board. You got to tell me if they're right or wrong. Okay, once you finish writing it, look at the screen. Do we see what you're writing? Where's number three? Uh, right here, the one. No, no, on the Skype paper. Oh, right here. Where do you indicate it? Yeah. There. Um. What is the question asking you to do? Let L be a function of X. So what is it that you do? Say equal to L? No, no. What is the whole question? What are you looking for? I'm looking for the distance uh, from X, Y to origin. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that all um, it also gives me the equation. Okay, so what solve it for us? Mm -hmm. Question that before you do this equation mm -hmm. is asking you to give a function or any equation on how far this line is from the origin. Mm -hmm. So would that be this the uh... The slope formula? Oh, you know me. Um, if I give him my hint, what is that a good? The square root of x2 minus x1 plus y2. The minus square root, the, can you repeat that? x2 minus x1. Okay, tell them what you're putting together. Yeah. Give them the equation. What, what yes. equation is it? This, 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 Remember the distance formula? Oh, yeah. So, what's that? What's that's what the question is asking for, isn't it? How mm -hmm. far it is? Mm -hmm. As far as length of distance. That's the slope. Mm -hmm. um, what is the distance formula? Uh, this, what was the distance formula? The square root of x2 minus x1 plus minus x1 minus x sub 2, not x squared, x sub 1. Um, over? No, it's a minus um, y2 minus y1. No, it's plus. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're getting there. Yes, yeah, minus y1. Okay, can you repeat it one more time? All of it completely. Uh, yeah, x2 minus x1, x2 parentheses, and then plus y2 minus y1 parentheses. Um, all that is square root all of it. No, the square root of all that. Oh, square root. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can plug numbers in. Um. Mm -hmm. um. Put zero, zero. So 
Every remember, does everyone remember where the distance formula came from? If you want me to redo all these? Will we going to read that and explain what I've been going along? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you. Yeah. No, no. It's so oh, good. Thank you very, very much. I, did, I didn't mean, I hope I didn't embarrass you. Because you weren't the only one. Because you know, I don't know this, really can help you. <laughs> Okay, let's begin here. Let's look at the distance formula. So let's look at two points. Okay, let's let's pretend I have these two points and there's a line connecting them. The distance from between point A and point B. How do we figure that out? Well, we have to look at two things. How far is it from point from this one to this one? And we also have to see how far it does it go up from this one to this one. Does that look familiar? Have we do we know any formulas that does that deals with this type of picture? Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? What is the equation? Very good. So a squared. A is this length here, B is this length, and C is that length. So C is actually the distance between point A to point B. So far, so good. Now, how do we figure out the distance between two numbers? What's that? Okay, let's see. Be between one and five. How far are they apart? Between two and 97. Between 12 and 218. How did you get that so fast? Subtract them. We took the second number. So 5 minus 1 is 4. 97 minus 2 is 95. So does it matter which two numbers I give you? So if this is the first one and this is the second number, how do I find the distance between them? Subtract them. I, the formula is x2 minus x1. That finds the distance between any two, two, two values. So that works on this one. So it's x2 minus x1. How about vertically? Yeah, so now it's going to be y2 minus y1. So B is equal, A is equal to x2 minus x1 squared. It's squared. And B is y2 minus y1 squared. All that equals the distance squared. To get distance by itself, how do I get rid of this the two? Square root. So the distance formula is actually the square root of the second x value minus the first x value, the second y minus first y.
So far, so good. So now we have the formula. Let's look at what the question is really asking now. Consider the point x, y lying on the graph of the line at 4x plus 8y equals 3. Let L be the distance from, so let L be the distance from point x, y to the origin. From x, y to the origin. From x, y to the origin. How does this fit into this? Very good. Because if, if this is our origin, these are the points that we begin with, x1, y1. The points we end up at are x2, y2. The subscript simply means this is my first point, this is my second point. That's all the subscripts tell us. So what I got to do here, since L is a function of x, I got to put the stuff in there. So what is X2? X2 is X. What is X1? Y2? And then Y was zero. x minus 0 is just x, so it's x squared plus y squared. Are we done? Because the question says, write L as a function of x. What does that mean? So we know that L is equal to X squared plus Y squared. Is L a function of X? In other words, in this equation, is the only variable we have X? No. What is Y? What is y? The only thing we know for sure is this equation. Here we can figure out what y is. Solve for y. So we have to move the 4x over. How? Subtract 4x from both sides. We get 8y, negative 4x plus 3. Get the y by itself. We got to divide by 8. So this becomes simplified. It's 1 half x plus 3 eighths. So that's what y equals. Now we got to put them together. This is what y equals, and we only want x inside the equation. So y is negative one half x plus three eighths squared. It looks like an easy question when you first begin it. What do you got to do next? 
I mean, in all practicality purposes, this is a function of only x. You could just plug it in there, see if it works, if, if the computer will take it. If not, what do we have to do? We have to do this. We have to get rid of the parentheses. So at first, I would see if the computer would take this as a solution because it is a function and the only variable is x. But if it doesn't take it, it says simplify. How do we simplify this part? So how do we simplify that? Boil, is there another way? Can we just distribute? No, you can't. It looks like that's the most common mistake. If there's a plus or minus inside a parenthesis and it's to a power, you cannot distribute because the distributed property only works if it's multiplication or division. So you're right here. What this means is we are going to have to foil because this square means it's this parenthesis times itself. So, in other words, what that says is both of these terms inside here have got to multiply to both of those terms inside the second one. So, negative one half x times negative one half x is what? So, I have negative one half x times negative one half x. That's the first one. Negative times positive is a negative. I have one half X times three eighths. That's it for that one. Positive times negative is a negative. Three eighths times one half X positive times positive is positive three eighths times three eighths. Now we got to multiply and combine them. Negative negative is positive one half times one half is one fourth x times x is x squared. One times three is three. Two times eight is 16. Nothing cancels. So three times one is three. Eight times two is 16. Nothing cancels. Three times three is nine. Eight times eight is 64. Whenever you get rid of parentheses, always combine like terms. So negative and negative, so it's, they're both negative. 3 16th plus 3 16th is 2 3 16th. The two and the 16 cancel, so we have eight. Now, where does all that go? So this entire thing 
goes all the way back up in here. So I have L of X is equal to the square root of X squared plus one fourth X squared, three eighths X Are we finished? No, because we can combine these two. So one and one fourth. Um, if this even is in proper fraction, so it becomes five fourths x squared minus three eighths x plus nine sixty fourths. There's our function. It looked simple. I mean, it started off with just one little equation, but this is what it meant. So that's the first three problems. The reason I do this in my classes, all my classes, I don't mind starting off the semester slow because that builds the foundation for what you need in the rest of the semester. So the better we know this stuff here, the faster we can move at the end. Yeah, I know other, other instructors, you'd be in chapter three already. Wouldn't know anything, but you'd be in chapter three. How about this one? Find the natural domain and graph of the function. The function is f of x equals negative x minus six. Domain. And graph. That's what we have to do in this one. All this is is a transformation. Let's look at the function. What is the basic function? Square root of x. What does the graph of square root of x look like? Well, we just talked about that earlier. Now, from this, this is the the library of functions, the basic function. We have to go from here and build this. So what's the first thing that happens? Well, we got a negative in front of the x. What does that do to our function? Flips it where? It's a horizontal, it's a horizontal flip. Because remember, what can you not have inside a radical? You cannot have a negative. So if there's a negative in there, what does X have to be to cancel that negative? It has to be a negative also. So if you ever put an, if your X changes from X to negative X, That's a horizontal flip. If the function changes, then that's a vertical flip. If the y values change, that's vertical flip. If the x values change signs, it's a horizontal flip. Okay, so we have the negative. What does this minus six do to us? Since it's inside the function, that means it's a horizontal shift. The question here 
is which direction does it shift? Does it shift to the left or to the right? To where? Why? Very good, yes. What this one says is, if we took the inside of the equation, set it equal to zero, You're right, but you didn't take it one step further. If you set this, remember, the smallest this number here can be is zero. Solve for x. We add six to both sides. Since there's a negative in front of the x, just change the signs. So x is equal to negative six. So that means it shifts to negative six. Normally, yes. If that was like it was, you were absolutely correct. It would shift to the right. But because it's a negative function now, think of it, look at it this way. If we were here at six and plugged it in there, what would we get? If X was six, what would we get? We get negative six minus six, we get negative 12. And you can't have the negative inside a square root. So because this one here says go to the right, but because it's negative, then X is negative, that means we go to the left. And that's what I'm saying is this is solve whatever's inside there for, solve it for zero. So there's our graph. So what's our domain? What X values can we use? Bracket or parenthesis? Bracket. Because if we put negative six, then we get a zero in there. So that's our domain. And there's our graph. So in our function, what we're looking for is since the X is negative, it has to point to the left. So it can't be this one and it can't be this one. So it's going to be one of these two. And since it, X, if it, X is six, negative six, negative six is negative, bless you, is negative 12. We can't use this one. So the answer is D. Number five. Graph the function. What kind of function is this? What do you call this type? Very good. It's a piecewise defined function. Did you all write it first? What it says is f of x is equal to 4 minus 2x whenever x is less than 2. And it equals to x plus 1 whenever x is greater than or equal to 2. Basically, all this tells us to do is draw two graphs on the same, two separate graphs on the same picture. That's what it's telling us.
So we're looking from two. What kind of graph is this going to be? It's a linear equation. Is it a positive or negative slope? Remember, a linear equation looks like this. Whatever is in front of the x is your slope. So what we have here is 4 minus 2x, which we can rewrite as negative 2x plus 4. So what does this number represent? You can say shift. Oh. Very good. It's the y-intercept. The constant number in any function is always the y-intercept. Because when x is 0, we got 4. So remember, this part is looking for any number less than 2. So when x is 0, y is 4. The slope is negative 2 over 1. So from this, from the y-intercept, go down two over one. Go down two over one. That one has to be an open circle. Why? We cannot use two. We can get infinitely close to it. So that's that graph. This first graph is this line. If you wanted to, you could always just we know it's a linear equation because x doesn't have any special operations to it, so we know it's a straight line. Once you find two points, you can connect them and there's your graph. I, I know that if x is 0, y is 4. When x is 2, y is 0. But since I can't use it, I put an open circle. So those are my two points I need. Do the same thing here. This one says I start off at 2 and then go on forever. What kind of graph is this? It, it's linear because again, x does not have a power, doesn't have a square, a special operation. It's not a denominator. So it's a linear equation. All we really need is two points. When x is two, two plus one is three. When x is three, three plus one is four. That's that graph. And if you have trouble with that, just draw both of these graphs completely and then look at the domains. I, cut out, I can only use anything from two to the left for this top one. So even though I knew this line goes on forever, I delete that part. So let's look at our pictures. Is it A, B, C, or D? Which ones we know cannot be right? Yeah, why? Yeah, they're going down. Now, the problem comes in, is it A or B? What's the difference between them? The open circle. On this graph, can you use the point at two or can, is it not used? It's not used. So the answer is B.
I can't tell you the number of times I get students arguing, but they're the same graph. No. All right, number six. Find a formula for the function graph. And this one. Oops, let me. Yeah, that second one is very, 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 very picky. Okay. Let's look at the first one. What can you tell me about the first one? Do we know any functions that have a V as a graph? Which one? The lines, what's it called? Absolutely, you're already good. We know that the function looks something like the absolute value. The absolute value graph looks like what? Starts at zero. And looks like that. So this is what the original function is at the origin. Where does this one move? Here's the origin here. Here's zero, zero. So this vertex moved to the right one and up one. So we have a both a horizontal and a vertical shift. Horizontal shifts happen inside the function. So is it plus or is it minus one? You're right there. Yes, because it's always the opposite inside the functions, it's always the opposite. If it's x minus 1, then it goes to the right. If it's x plus 1, it goes to the left. Does everybody see why that is? Because the original graph is at 0, 0. From here to here, if I plugged in 1, how do I shift it back over here to the origin? I subtract 1. So if you move to the right, you subtract one. If you move to the left, it's add one because it has to come out to be zero, zero at the end. Now, how do we go up one? No, this is a vertical shift. Vertical shifts are just what they are. Here, we just add one because this is the point that shifts from there to there. And then whatever the value is, we add one to it to go up. So that's that so far. Now what do we do? Because this graph actually, it shifts to the right one and up one. There's my new origin. So the graph looks like this. That's this one. How do I get it to flip? What's that? Right. Because I put I put a negative in front of the function. The function is the operation. 
All that tells me to do is flip it across the x-axis. And then that makes it go down. So there's our function. Okay, this one is one, two, three. How would you do this one? Just, this is what your answer is supposed to look like. You have a function. And then this first one, all it's gonna be is the negative absolute value of X minus one plus one, the Domain is anywhere from zero to two. Because this first one is this function from, from zero to two. Now the second function, that's this one here, B or they have two functions down here. How are you gonna do that one? How would you write this one? This is the first part. This is function one. This is function two. So here's function one, here's function two. So how would we define this one? It's what? But we have to tell, you can't write all that stuff down as an answer. What will you tell the computer the answer is? So let's look at the first equation. How, what's the equation for that one? Very good, exactly. This equation is f of, f of x equals three. It's a horizontal, it's a constant function. It's a horizontal line. So from zero to two. And I can include those because they're closed. How about this one? Does it go up or down or anything? So it's a constant function. What is the constant function here? There is no X values because it's a constant function. Negative two. So this, this one, this equation of that line is negative two. You, if you have an X, you have a movement in the graph. If you just have a number, it's a horizontal line. So this one is negative two, but it goes from two to four. I cannot include two. So it's two less than X, less than equal to four. Any questions about that? Because again, it's a horizontal lines are constant functions. 
when you interject an X inside a function, then you now have movement, vertical movement. Yeah, so what you would have to do here on these questions, we know that our second one is two less than X. So we couldn't use this B. We can't use that one because that the second function is included. We cannot use that one. So it has to be either this one or this one. What's the difference? Is this one is less than equal to X is less than. So the answer for this one would be F of X equals three from zero to two. It's negative two from two to four. You have to look at the signs of the inequalities. The top one has to have both included and only let the bottom one is not. Included. Number seven, test algebraically whether f of x equals negative four is even, odd, or neither. Test algebraically. What are they talking about? What kind of tests are they talking about? Mm, that's graphical. Here is testing. Do you know the definition of an even or an odd function? An even function. If f of x equals y, if I change the value of x to negative x, does it give me the same value y? An odd function. If I have f of x equals some value y, an odd function, if I change x to negative, then I change the value of y to negative y. That's an odd function. Neither is neither of those. In other words, if I have a function and if I change it to negative X, then I get something totally different. Graphically, even functions rotate about the X axis, about the Y axis. If X goes from positive X to negative X, I still get the same Y value. It's a horizontal shift, a uh, flip. An odd function, if I have an X and Y and I change it to negative X, do I get negative Y? It flips across the origin. This is graphically, this is algebraic. Let's test it. Let's say I put two in place of X. If I put two in place of X, what does it equal? Negative four. If I put negative two in there, what does it equal? It's a constant function. 
There is no X here. So I could put anything I want to. It's always going to equal negative 4. So I changed X to negative X and Y stay the same. So what does that mean? It's even. To summarize the whole algebraic express, uh, proof of this thing, even functions have only even exponents. and or constants. In other words, you can have x to the eighth plus 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 3. That's an even function because all the exponents are even. And it has a constant. Odd functions have only odd exponents, no constants. So even functions only have only even exponents. And you can have a, cons a constant number, but you don't have to. But you cannot have a constant number in an odd function. You can only have odd exponents. X x cubed, x fifth, x seventh, x ninth. Neither would be if you have an odd, if you have an odd or even ex, odd and even exponents, or if you have odd exponents and a constant. That would be neither. If you have odd and even exponents or odd exponents and a constant. I'm sorry, I ran out of space. Can everybody read that? So a, a neither function is if you have odd and even exponents, or if you have odd and even with a constant, but whenever you mix the odd and even exponents, it's a neither. Or if you have only odd exponents and you have a constant. Yeah, the constant is just a number. Let me go ahead and give you the, the examples of each one of those. Right. Let me give you examples of those. So, we did this already. Remember, for even, you have to have a horizontal flip. So, if I put in any x value, if I put in x2, it equals three. If I put in negative two, it still equals three. That's even.
f of x equals x squared. If I put two in there, two squared equals four. If I put negative two in there, negative two squared is also four. I put different x values. I got the same y value, even. Two x to the fourth minus x squared plus three. All the exponents are even, and I have a constant. What do you think this is going to be? Odd or even or neither? It'll be even because, as we just said in the earlier page, if all the exponents are even. You and if you have a constant or not, it doesn't matter, but it's it's an even equation. So let's look at this. So we have two times two to the fourth minus two squared plus three. We're also going to do negative two. Two negative two to the fourth minus negative two squared plus three. Two to the fourth is what? Two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. Minus two squared is four. Negative two to the fourth is what? Negative two times negative two is positive four. Times negative two is negative eight. Times negative two is positive 16. Negative two squared is four. Notice the equations are exactly the same because the even exponents get rid of the negatives. 32 minus four plus three, 28 plus three, 31. So for even functions, you, a constant function is an even function. If you only have even exponents, that's an even function. Or if you have even and constants, that's an even function. What's this exponent? One is one odd or even? Odd. So if I put in two in there, I get two. If I put negative two in there, I get negative two. I change the signs here. The answers are the same numbers, but different signs. That means it's odd. There are no constants, no even exponents, there are only odds, so let's see. Two cubed is eight. Three times eight is 24. Equals 26. I use the same number, but different sign as my input. Three X cubed plus X. So 
Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. A positive and negative is a negative 2. Negative uh, 3 times negative 8. Positive is negative is negative. 3 times 8 is 24. Minus 2 is negative 26. It's the same number, but different signs. So it's an odd. What do you think this is going to do? Well, let's see. We plug in two inside there. I get two times two cubed plus two. Two cubed is eight. Two times eight is 16 plus two is 18. We have two times negative two cubed plus two. Negative two cubed is negative eight. Two times positive is negative is negative. Two times eight is 16. Negative 16 plus two is negative 14. Different numbers. Neither. Negative, uh, odd exponents cannot be paired with constants. Only even ones can. So that, that's what odd and even functions are all about. So far so good. Bringing back some memories of algebra. All right, let's see the next one. Determine algebraically where, whether the given function is odd, even, or neither. I don't have to waste my time doing this one. You can tell me what it is with what we just talked about. Let me see. Let me close to there. Neither. Why is it neither? Odd exponent and a constant. You can't mix them. So this one is neither. The way you would test it is put the same number but different signs in there, and you'll get different answers. Write a formula for f. Ah, what does this mean? What does that mean? Let me write these down. G of X equals negative six X cubed plus three. It's neither nine. So F of X is equal to X plus is X plus two. Yes, it's 4x and 5. So g of x is 4x, and h of x is 5 plus x. What does this mean? Fogo. What does it mean? What is that? What operations are we doing here? You're right. It's, it is F of G, right? Yes, this is. What does it mean? Yes. These are what are called composite functions.
Typically, they referred to fog and golf. F and G are functions. The way this one is read is F of G. F of G. This is G of X. So when you ever say of something of something, that means it's an input. It's the variable of. So what that means is G is the input of F. Those are composite functions of one function inside another. This is the only time the when you read mathematics, you do it backwards. Yes, this is read f of g of h. But what this means is h is the variable of g. And this whole equation is the variable for f. You read right to left this time. So let's look at this one. G of H. Now all of this stuff is F of G of H. Now, what does all that stuff mean? We first take the H function, this one. Anywhere inside G, I see an X. I put that equation. So G of H of X is actually 4 times 5 plus X. Because H gets plugged into the x value. So that becomes 20 plus 4x. That's g of h of x. That's this stuff. That means this equation goes where? It goes inside the f function. The F function is X plus two. So anywhere I see an X, I put this entire equation down. So I have F of 20 plus four X, which is 20 plus four X plus two. And there's the answer. Number 10, graph the equations A through D. All these are, are transformations. Yeah, they're all the same type of equation. They're just shifted. So number 10, A. Y is equal to, I'll let you write down these four functions, X minus two squared minus four, X minus one squared plus one, X plus two squared plus three, X plus three squared minus one. Okay, so this is really what we're having here. We have a function
this is really what we're having here. There's some, it could be race or some power even. It doesn't matter. A, B, C, and D each serve a purpose. A, what does A tell us? The, the leading coefficient of the entire function. It tells us whether the function goes up or down, up if it's positive, down if it's negative. It also tells us whether it's wide or narrow. skinny or tall. Pretty powerful letter. We'll worry about B later. C, what is C? The number after the X inside the parenthesis. What does that do for us? That's the horizontal shift. Note, it's always opposite direction of the sign. If it's minus, it goes right. If it's negative, it goes left. It's opposites. D is a constant, it's the y-intercept. Well, no, you can't say that because if you have a function like this, everything else changes of it. It's also the vertical shift. If it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. So looking at our equations, we have the first one is x minus 2 squared minus 4. What kind of function is this? From the library of function, what kind of function is this? Because if we didn't have that two right there, what's, there's X, but it has a power two. So all of these are quadratic equations. What do we know about quadratic equations? They're either up like this or down like this. It's up if A is positive. It's down if A is negative. Remember, A is the coefficient. That's where A is. So what is the coefficient of that one? It's a positive one. So there, therefore, we know that this quadratic equation opens up. What kind of horizontal shift do we have? You know, look inside here, set that equal to zero. Two, which direction? Two to the right. Because if we took inside there, x minus two, set it equal to zero, we get x equals 2. So this is my horizontal shift. And here's my vertical shift. It says from that point, go down 4. 
So there's my new origin. That's what the graph looks like. So we know that our vertex is in the fourth quadrant. So which graph does it match with? A, B, C, or D? It's only one in the fourth quadrant. So do the same with B, C, D. Equation B. X minus one plus one. So what do we know about the graph? Does it open up or down? Because it's positive, it opens up. Where's our horizontal shift? To the right one. Vertical shift? Up one. There's my new origin there. Once you see it that way, these are super easy problems. So our answer here has to be C. How about C? Let's look at this one. Which direction is the shift, left or right? How many units? And then, yeah, so it's to the left and up. So it's got to be in the the second quadrant. It's not that one, not that one, gotta be B. Anybody not see what I'm doing? How about D? So which letter is it? A? Because it shifts to the left and it goes down shifts from the left and goes down. So it has to be in the third quadrant. Nope, 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 it has to be A. So the better you know your library of functions and, you, and what the transformations look like, the easier all this stuff becomes. The number of units and directions of the graph of the equation is to be shifted is given. Give an equation for the shifted graph, then sketch the original graph and shifted, the original shifted graphs. Okay, so x squared plus y squared equals 25, four up, two left. x squared plus y squared equals 25. Four up, two left. Okay, so it wants us to give, give the equation for the shifted graph and then sketch. What do we know this looks like? Actually, if you think about it, it came from this equation. This is when I teach algebra, these are this is the part that I think is fascinating. What does this graph look like? It's a right triangle, it's a Pythagorean theorem. This is a picture of a circle. Centered at the origin with radius five. They're the same thing. 
why are these equations the same, but they give us completely different graphs? This is, this is the why that's important. Okay, we have a circle here, right? Any point I give you on the graph, we know there's a distance, which is called the radius. The radius. It is composed of a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. It's a Pythagorean theorem that defines, but the radius is the same. So in other words, the hypotenuse is always the same. A circle is nothing more than an infinite number of right triangles with the same radius, same distance. Every one of these points I give you on this graph all have the same distance from the center point. That's how come the equations are the same. The Pythagorean theorem defines a circle. So the true formula for a circle is the radius squared, that's the distance, is equal to x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. Looks familiar, doesn't it? The hypotenuse is x2 minus x1 squared y2 minus y1 squared. This point here is my hk. It's the center of my circle. Or it's my beginning point, x1, y1. The center is at hk. The radius is the same thing as the distance. So that in itself is, is the first mind-blowing thing, is because here you have a circle which has no corners defined by no, something nothing but corners. So it's asking, it's asking for us to give the equation of the shifted graph. Now, that's where this comes in. Shifted two to the left. That's a horizontal shift, isn't it? Horizontals are the x-axis. So I shift it two to the left. X two. Is it a plus or minus? Remember, inside the parentheses is always opposites. And there's your equation. I shift left and go up four. So there's my, from my origin, I shifted left two spaces and I go up four. And the radius is five. Since it's 25, I know it's, 5 squared equals x plus 2 squared, y minus 4 squared.
what quadrant is the center of the circle in? If it shifts two left and uh, four, two left and four up, what quadrant am I in? The third quadrant. Well, this quadrant, not a third. Second, it's two left, four up. So I'm in the second quadrant. So I have to be this one. So the only thing shifts in a circle is the center. So my answer is D. Two left, four up. Graph the function cube root of x minus three plus two. X minus three plus two. Yeah. Again, it's another transformation. What do we know about this function? What's the basic function it deals with from the library of functions? It builds from that function. What does that function look like? <laughs> it's like a stretched out S. That's the cube root. So here's the origin. Where does it shift horizontally? Shifts three to the right. And then what? Up to. So there's my new origin. One, two, three, one, two. The graph looks the same. Only thing changes is where your origin is. So we're in the, the origins in the first quadrant. Is it A, B, C, D? Yeah, D. It's the only one that, that shifts over to, to the right and up. Last one. Graph the function. X plus four cubed plus two. What kind of function is this? What is the basic function this one deals with? Well, there's the x. It's inside parentheses. So it deals with x cubed. What does the x cubed function look like? It, this one goes up and down instead of sideways. Now, with what we know so far, what's the horizontal shift? How far? Which direction? To the left. It's opposite. Anything inside the parentheses is always opposite. Why is it always opposite? Because remember, we, we start off in the origin. So this is at zero, zero. What does it take for this thing to be at zero, zero? So we set it equal to zero. So it shifts four to the left. And then up two. So that's my new origin. Of course, 
Okay, you know you have a point at negative four, two. But to draw the graph, you have to get to other points. So create one of these, go negative six, negative five, negative three, negative two. Because here's negative four. And just find the values, plot them in there, and then you have it. So far, so good. Okay, so what I want you to do over the weekend, if you haven't done that assignment, do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's the very first time. It's chapter one, algebra review, I believe. Algebra and trig review. And again, it's not a test score. It's a homework score. So if you get it wrong, try it again, try it again, try it again. And we'll finish it up next week. Because I want to make sure everybody understands the rules of algebra and things before we move on. Okay, nope. Everybody have a safe break, uh, weekend. I will see you guys on Tuesday. Again, if I if we get the approval to change the room locations, I'll send you a reminder. That will be in room 122.